Hey everybody, before the show starts, log on to musicmoneymakeover.com slash shop to download all my books and free guides. And while you're there, make sure you click on the book a call tab to book a call with me to get all your questions answered and your problem solved. Enjoy the show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover show. My name is Casey Graham and yes, this is yet another episode of the Motown Records System Explained. Uh, and this is part three in that. This is Barry Gordy's quality control system all right so look before we get started i want to say make sure you like comment and subscribe on this uh channel okay and also for you all who have been watching the channel and you have your music uh i mean your profit maximization checklist from the links down below don't forget to download the new user's guide that comes with that or at that attaches to that thing now because not only in the profit maximization checklist are there a lot of difficult things that i have in there on registering now I've written a book so that you have every single step from that checklist so that you can register every single account that you need to collect all the money that is owed to you from all these streaming services and sales and all this good stuff like that all right anyway let's jump into today's show Motown record system explain part three Barry Gordy's uh, quality control system now I want to dig into this and give you some definitions here what is the um, quality control. Let's look at let's look at quality. All right, and in this case, we're going to use uh, the noun definition for quality. And in that case, it's going to be the property of that particular subject. So check this out. This is from the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Uh, property that which belongs to a body or substance or can be predicated of it. All right. So in this case, Motown is producing a high quality product. And let's dig into control right here. And we're going to use nouns and verbs for control, but I just want, you know, to give you that legal jargon of it. Check it out. Uh, primarily a book, register, or account to keep correct or check another account or register or a counter register. All right. Um, and the verb sense of it is to keep under check by a counter register or double account or to check, to restrain, and to govern. So, now that you understand this, we're talking about producing a high quality product under a high quality control system. That is what Barry Gordy was trying to do. Now, this quality control process, where does it come from? Well, this quality control process was something that Barry Gordy uh, put together from working at the Ford Motor Company. Obviously, he had several odd jobs before this, but getting into this and looking at a system that was not created by the Ford Motor Company bus, but was actually created by George Washington Carver, all right, from studying the plant and how the plant worked. But anyway, that's just a little bit of deeper knowledge for you all. He got this from working at the Ford Motor Company, okay? And that assembly line he took and he added it to, and this is what he's known for, he took that process and added it to the label, all right? You bring in one record on a said artist, Everybody at the table listens to it and you get a vote. All right. That's how the system works. All right. The company is only as strong as its weakest link. So if they put out something that's terrible after behind something that was good, the public, the consumers, the retailers, everybody's going to be looking at them, even other record labels and saying, what's going on at Motown? OK, so everybody will be looking at the company as a whole when the records get put out. All right. So just letting you know that when you're building your record company, this quality control process is a, is a big thing for you. Okay, let's, can yeah. we finish our meeting here? It's, been, it's afternoon now. So we'll get into the conclusions and assignments. A decision will be made on the Temptations record. Which side is it? My girl. My girl? How many think that's not a hit? How many think it is a hit? How many is undecided? Okay, what are your comments? <laughs> Strike me as being a smash of any kind, but it's a, it's a temptation strike. I like it. Definitely. Yeah. It's a nice, clear sound, yeah. and Beautiful it's a hit. It's, 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 it's kind of hard for a record like that not to be a hit. What about Ralph? I pass. <laughs> no, you can't uh, pass, It's not Ralph. fair. I don't know. It does, doesn't do anything to me. I think it's a hit. The song's a hit. Okay, we're releasing this one. Oh, I mean, since you it's think it's a hit record? Uh, 
I think it's I think it is the best record they have, and I feel that it could be a very big hit. So that's it. You'll find out whether or not we got it. Now let's look at the constructive criticism here. Constructive criticism, what is it and how does it pertain to this process? All right, so you're gonna to wanna to have a counsel and this counsel will be necessary to coach the writers, all right, to give those votes, all right? And to be honest with you, you know, your personal opinion artist does not depict the public opinion. It doesn't give you a true public opinion on your music. So if, you don't, if you're the owner of your own rights and you've got your own record label, you're going to need a group of people that won't be your yes people. Okay? You're going to need these people to listen to your music and give you the first thought that's on the top of their mind. If you're building a record company, maybe this is your PR, your promoter, your manager that you have in-house, your staff producer, all these people. You're going to build a group of people and everybody's going to vote. And you, the president and the owner of the company, cannot hawk over people to make them feel intimidated so that you sway them to get a yes or a no. That's not how quality control works. Quality control lets the product be the president. It lets the product serve the company. It lets the product state who you are. And if it doesn't pass quality control, whether the president wants it or not, it doesn't come out. It has to have a group satisfactory vote, all right? It is also great to have a council of people to give you constructive criticism on whether or not your record is great. Now, this will be for the songwriters and producers, but I'm gonna dig into that on the next step. To be in there with a bunch of guys that you're competing with, and yet they're constructively giving you some information that they think will make your product better. You could tell that the writers had been sit down and talked to and trained. The beat was solid. Old Jameson had that bass out there. You understand me? It was way out there. They didn't just throw a record out. You could tell that record was docked on. It was, it, it was nourished. It was beat. It was, you're talking about something whooped. You know, it was whooped. Tracks of My Tears was one of those songs. I, when the first time I took it in there, you know, they listen to it and they say, oh yeah, man, that's a good song. That's, that's, that's really good, man. But you ended it up wrong. Training and systems. What is a training and what is systems, all right? Training and systems. The songwriters and band members were structured. So much so that they would produce quality in Barry Gordy's system. And because they went through the quality control system, then they now can report back to their producing stations or rooms or song rooms or whatever it is to make better records because now they can start to see this is what the public wants and this is what inside uh, information will be giving me about my very own record and if my record is succeeding or not, if I'm doing great records. This sends, sends you back as a producer and an artist to the drawing board to make sure that you can make something of quality. Now I'm gonna show a clip really quickly. This is gonna be based on hooking the audience. Check it out. Barry had a great ear. He was always saying, if you don't get them in the first four to eight bars, you gotta go back to the drawing board. He, he used to say that all the time. We gotta get them in the first 10 seconds. We had to come up with these fabulous intros, you know, something that would catch your attention immediately. But because the company was such a democratic situation and this quality control, stuff like that happens, you know? So that was it. I want you all as artists to understand that if you don't get the audience in the first four to eight bars, as Lamont Dozier was saying, and I know he looks crazy in that clip when he first came on, but Lamont Dozier is a great writer and producer, I'm telling you. Anyway, but that first four to eight bars, if you don't get them at that time, you lost them. As Barry Gordy said, that first 10 seconds is everything. Now, I would have played the music in the clip, but I, I'm, I don't want to fight any YouTube copyright claims. There's too many songs in that clip. If you want, you can go watch the Hitsville documentary on Showtime. All right? Um, yes, I listen to music that fast. All right? Eight to 10 seconds or four to eight bars. I'm listening to that intro. It better get me. The executives at any label, publishers, hell, even the public will be listening to your music that fast. And then if you don't catch them, then your retention rate, as you YouTube creators may know or content creators know of, whether it be through Instagram or YouTube or Facebook, whatever, when you look at that retention number and it goes down in those first couple seconds, you know something's wrong in the video. But when it lasts, you can keep 50% of your following or your viewers on target for the first three to four minutes you got a good piece of content right there. Anything below that 50%, you're in trouble. You need to fix some things. 
All right, so that's why that intro piece is very necessary for the song to have some life, to have some retention, to have some listeners, to have people say, hey, did you hear this new song or not? All right. Anyway, that's part three of the Motown system, uh, record system. Explain Barry Gordy's quality control process system, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, uh, download the profit maximization checklist and the user's guide that I wrote to it. Uh, like I said in the beginning, it's going to give you every step that you need uh, to register all those accounts. Don't forget to visit musicmoneymakeover.com. And I have all of my videos and articles sorted out on that website more so than here. I'll see you all later in the week. Peace. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the show. Make sure you log on to musicmoneymakeover.com forward slash shop to download all my books and free guides. And while you're there, click on the book a call tab to book a call with me to get all your questions answered and problems solved. I'll see you all soon.